Our dish today is a sandwich, a wrap to be more precise. Basically, we'll take the spinach filling from my spinach pie and put it into a store-bought wrap with some hummus, avocados, and tomatoes. It's simple, it's green, and it's perfect for the summer. There is really nothing to this dish besides chopping, so I thought, why don't we use this opportunity to brush up on our knife skills? Okay, let's start with everyone's favorite vegetable, the onion. Cut about half an inch of the top of the onion. Trim the dirty root, but keep as much of the root end as possible. This will keep the onion together, helping you dice more efficiently. Cut the onion in half, pole to pole, and peel. Dig in with your finger to take the first good layer off. It's never that good. There are always dried up spots on it, and taking it off will be way faster than trying to remove only the brown papery layer. Clean off your board thoroughly before you start cutting the onion. Normally, I position the onion half with the root facing away from me, but I'll turn this one around so that you can see better. Don't forget the claw grip and the pinch grip. Using the tip of the knife, slice the onion without cutting through the back. See how after I am done, my onion is still in one piece? Then cut the onion in the other direction. This time, I'm using the back half of my knife, not the tip. When you get towards the back of the onion, tip it forward and make a few cuts rotating the onion after each cut. I know what you're thinking. This is kind of a lame dice. Some pieces are square and some are three times as long because we skipped the horizontal cut. Not to worry, we'll fix all that in a minute. Let me finish dicing the rest of the onions and I'll show you how we'll turn my bad dice into good dice. Once you get through all the onions, get yourself into a mincing hold. In other words, your guiding hand is on top of the knife, not in a claw grip. And work through your pile of onions two times. Once in this direction, and one more time in the other direction. And voila! Unless you're looking for a job in a Michelin-starred restaurant, this is a perfectly decent dice. I know this method will get a few raised eyebrows. One of the most popular videos on my channel is how to dice an onion with radial cuts. And many viewers and students have been asking me why I'm not using this wonderful radial cut method in my classes and videos. The short answer is that radial cuts are easier to watch than to do. In other words, it's great for getting video views, but not so great for an average home cook. I have tried teaching onion dice using at least four methods over 15 years. The horizontal cut method, the radial cuts method, the square onion method, and the method I showed you today. For each method, I must have watched at least 50 people using it, and here is what I've noticed. The horizontal cuts method is the most difficult for people and results in the most cut fingers. The radial cut method always gets a lot of aha moments while I'm showing it. Isn't that nifty? Perfect dice without the horizontal cut. <laughs> But when people try it themselves, they realize that fanning out the slices is harder than it looks and somewhat slow. The square onion method required remembering a lot of steps. Just because it was perfectly intuitive to me didn't mean it was perfectly intuitive to other people. For about a year now, I've been teaching the method I showed you today. Skip the horizontal cut and finish with a bit of mincing. So far, it has worked the best for my students, both in terms of speed, safety, and the evenness of the dice. Is that how I do it when I cook for myself? <laughs> no, I like the horizontal cut, but that doesn't mean that it's the best method for most other people. All right, get the onions into a pot. 
Whenever you swipe your board with a knife, always flip it over. Swiping your cutting edge on the board can dull your knife. Swipe both sides of the knife on the board to clean it off. By the way, notice that I have a piece of shelf lining under my board. That's important to keep my board from sliding around. Another option is a damp paper towel. Add two tablespoons of olive oil and some salt and cook on medium heat until the onions are translucent and golden brown. You want to keep an eye on them and stir them occasionally so that they cook evenly. Okay, back to knife scales. The next ingredient we'll need for our wraps are the scallions. The most common problem with them is that the pieces aren't separating. You think you slice them? but they are still holding together. Here is how to solve it. On every single slice, first bring the back of your knife all the way down and then push it away from you. It doesn't need to be a big push. It's only a few millimeters, but if the push away doesn't happen, the scallions won't completely separate. Now let's talk about leafy greens. I have parsley, dill, cilantro, and tarragon here. Pull out all the tough stems and use both hands to shape the leaves into a tight bundle. Then hold them with a claw grip so that you don't cut your fingers and slice. Same situation here as with the scallions. You need to push the knife away from you. Once you turn your herbs into thin ribbons, place your hand on top of the knife and mince. Working with spinach is just like working with herbs or any leafy greens, but the bundle will be bigger and our pieces don't need to be nearly as small. Slice into ribbons and then mince the other way. Today we don't need that many cherry tomatoes, but if you ever need a lot of them or a lot of grapes cut in half, you can sandwich them between two deli container lids and slice like this. Just make sure all your fingers are up. The avocado is pretty straightforward. I know that removing the pit by stabbing it with a knife is very popular, but I don't like it. If the avocado is ripe, the pit pops right out very easily and getting that pit off the knife can be a little dangerous depending on how hard you stabbed it. Scrape off any dark spots, slice, sprinkle with salt, lots of lemon juice or lime juice and toss. Now that we've chopped everything up, let's season the filling and assemble the wraps. Here are our spinach, scallions, and herbs. Let's add a little salt and a splash of pomegranate molasses or lemon juice. I like to add some feta, but if you want to keep the wraps vegan, you can skip it. Add those lovely cooked onions and mix very thoroughly with your hands. I like to get the spinach fairly wilted, which makes it taste juicier. This filling lasts in the fridge surprisingly well and you can keep the leftovers till the next day. Spread some hummus on the wrap, top with avocado, add a good pile of spinach mix, the cherry tomatoes, and wrap it up. Okay, so as you can see, just because I have knife skills doesn't mean I have wrap skills. I did a stupid thing and put the wrap in the oven to warm it up. And even though it was wrapped up in foil, part of it managed to get crispy, which is not at all desirable. <laughs> it's a good thing I don't do corporate catering. Can I have a redo? I promise I can do better on the second wrap. By the way, here is another idea. Avocados are unpredictable. You never know when they'll get ripe, but you can achieve a similar rich and creamy effect with Greek yogurt. Spinach in, tomatoes in, one side in, the other side in, and roll. I hope you're rooting for me. <laughs> this is not as easy as it looks, but I think I'm doing a lot better this time. In the words of the one and only Lily Singh. And that's a wrap. <laughs> to learn more about how to use a claw grip and how to keep your knife sharp, check out the links in the description below. If you want more plants in your diet, someone will have to chop them. So you might as well learn to be good at it. 
Here are more very detailed culinary tutorials for you to check out, and if you are ever in the Boston area, maybe I'll see you in one of my classes.